Welcome to the seventh lecture of Advanced Calculus course. Today we will learn about the Intermediate Value Theorem. Intermediate Value Theorem is another important theorem in our discussion of real analysis. And the discussion of this theorem will follow from our previous discussion of continuity. Now, what is Intermediate Value Theorem? The theorem states that for a continuous function f from interval a to b to the set of all reals, if the, there is a continuous function like that, and there exists a certain number l between the function values of the endpoints of the uh, interval domain, domain interval, then there exists some c in the interval such that the function value of that point exactly equals l. The theorem has many important uses. For example, let's say that there's a function like this, a continuous function, and we know two values of that function, one negative and one positive. Then, if we know that the function, this function is continuous, then the theorem implies that since, let's say, maybe, since a zero is between the negative value and positive value, we automatically know that there is a root of this function somewhere between a and b, uh, meaning that there is a point that the function value equals zero. So, uh, well, this is just an elementary example. Uh, using the theorem, we could prove interesting facts such as that, for example, on, on planet Earth, which is a spherical, spherical shape, approximately, there are two antipodal, antipodal points, meaning that the line segment connecting those two points cross the center of our, of our uh, center of the sphere. There are two such points that where the temperature and air pressure at those two points are exactly equal. Well, this is another interesting fact, and these uh, these results could all be derived from the intermediate value theorem. So now let's try to prove the theorem. Now, how could we prove this? Now, let's say There's a continuous function f that we want to talk about. f. This is the graphity function fx. Uh, the lines are too. We want the lines to be straight. OK. Uh, and this point. It's a comma f a and this would be b and let's say this this is the value of l and what we what we want to prove is that there exists some point c between a and b such that the function value at that point equals L. So we want to find such point. Now, we have to prove that such point really exists. And how do we do that? Now, the proof goes like this. Uh, let's label this A, A1, and this B, B1. And we will discuss, we will consider the 
two sequences A and B N. And these sequences will be defined through a process like this. First, find the arithmetic average, arithmetic mean of two of these two points, A1 and B1. That would be A plus B divided by two. A1 plus B1 divided by two. And we look at the function value at that point, which is f a1 plus b1 over 2. And we will see if this value is less than l or greater than l. In this case, the value is less than l. So we define this value a2. And this value b1 will be b2. And now we do the process again. We find the arithmetic mean of the two points. And look at the function value at that point, uh, which is less than L again. So this point would be A3. This would be A3. And this point would be B3. And then again, we find the arithmetic mean of the two points. And in this case, the function value is greater than L. So, uh, so this point will be our fourth uh, fourth term of the sequence bn, b sub n, and this point would be a4. So to summarize, the process goes like this. The interval a n to bn would be equal to either a n minus 1 comma a n minus 1 plus b n minus 1 divided by 2, the average, the arithmetic mean of the two points, or a m minus 1 plus b m minus 1 divided by 2 to b m minus 1, depending on the value at the value of the function evaluated at this point. So if, uh, this will be the case if the function value of a m minus 1 plus b m minus 1 over 2 is greater greater than L and this would be the case if the function value at that point is less than or equal to L. Now if we define the, se uh, uh, the sequence of intervals like this we could easily see that the value L always falls into uh, falls between FAN and FBN. Now but uh, look at the sequence let's say for AN. First we know that AN is bounded because it is uh, it has a lower bound A and upper bound B so the sequence is bounded and we could easily check that this sequence is increasing as well. And in the previous lecture, uh, in the previous lectures, uh, I forgot, it was probably lecture four, uh, three or four, um, the conclusion we have that for a bounded increasing sequence, we know that the sequence converges to some number. Let's say that number is C. Now, uh, then, the sequence f a f a sub n will also converge to f c. Why is that? Because f is a continuous function. The definition of continuous function implies that when a n, a sub n converges to a, a certain number c, then the uh, sequence of the function values of the terms of that sequence will also converge to the function value evaluated at the number that the original sequence will converge to. So, f a sub n will converge to f c due to con continuity of function f. But now we also know that the sequence b sub n minus a sub n converges to zero 
because at each uh, uh, when we calculate each interval we know that the length of this interval is uh, decreasing by uh, each time by half exponentially so at first this much and then the and then the length of the interval has decreased by half and again by half again by half and so on so it will convert to zero it is uh, it could be easily proved so the conclusion is that the sequence b sub n will also converge to the number c so if we take the limit uh, on every side of this inequality fb sub n will also converge to fc because f is continuous so the conclusion we get is that l is uh, greater than or equal to f uh, fc and less than or equal to f of c so the conclusion is that l equals fc and we have found the number c that satisfies the equation that we wanted it to satisfy so we have proven the intermediate value theorem uh, now in the next lecture we will try to uh, we'll prove that a continuous function is bounded and it has both a maximum value and a minimum value. See you at the next lecture of Advanced Calculus course.